inside an organization, and there is a platform, and there is a structure, and there's a process in place, that if wrongdoing does happen. That it of is course, but as you can see, I've been talking about what's been going on in this country for the past seven or eight years with respect to a specific community. And our concern is that you can say, well, yeah, we, we look at these things and we try and do better, but you keep screwing up. And in a big way that seriously affects people's lives um, and violates their rights and puts them at great risk of torture or, you know, even worse if they are deported from this country, whether it's your role in arresting people on the secret trial certificates, the security certificates, whether it's your complicity in opportunistic rendition to torture. Like, these are things that continue to happen. Mr. Abdul Razak is sitting in the Sudan right now, five years after he was apprehended at the request of this government. He can't get home. So, whatever is going on inside the RCMP, our concern is it's not good enough. And part of the problem is, there was a recommendation in the Aurora inquiry that said the RCMP needs a proper, rigorous oversight mechanism, and that has not been implemented. And while that's certainly the role of the government to implement it, we don't hear too many people from within the RCMP saying, yeah, we really need that, because that way we can stop violating people's rights. And again, and again I don't want to get into debate, but I'll just I'll finish off see what happens. If you don't decide that you certainly are opposed to, or that you don't like the, the response or whatever's coming out, especially this is for the young people here, you know, join that organization or take direction towards that end that we, you can actually have and contribute. If you think that the RCMP is not playing by the rules that set down, well then, you know what, join the RCMP and make a difference. If you think it's something in government, then choose that. I mean, there is avenues where you can sit back and say, the people who are carrying the load isn't doing a good job. Well, we're not doing a good job, and you think you can do a better one, then become part of it and make that happen too. I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, but you know, you're sitting here and, and there's something in the world, and we all have a social conscience, and you don't think something is happening the way you think it should happen, then you know what? There's a bigger step forward to be taken. I have a question for you. That's an interesting strategy to, to maybe join an organization and work with it. What do you think about this strategy as well um, to form activist groups and, and to come to try to speak with you? Like, what is your personal feeling well, about having high school students here? By all me. I mean, you have a voice. I mean, uh, somebody's, uh, how many of you here are eligible to vote? A few months. In a few months, did you all vote? Good, excellent. There's the first strategy about doing something. Have a, have, a, have a voice in the way who you elect and what the politician has to say. How many of you engaged your politicians in your local writings? How many of you sat down to understand what their viewpoints are, what their mandate is, where are they going? Uh, how many of you come to the RCMP and speak with them about their views and their yeah. positions? Well, <laughs> you know, our views and our decisions, certainly if you're going to apply for any organization, you're going to sit down and say, do I want that as a career? And if I do want that as a career, is that the organization that I want that career within? Do I want to be a doctor in Ontario or do I want to be a doctor in the U.S.? Do so I do you think it's an effective strategy then to, to, to be active and to be involved in well, activism? Well, if you look at world history, some of the greatest changes in the world has come because people who have been active, who have, have been a voice for those people who didn't have a voice. Let's be honest, we look around, uh, it has happened and it has been very successful. Uh, you have to, but, but if you're going to be a voice, you have to be a voice to the people that needs to hear you the most and the best. And who would that be? It's our politicians, they are, they are the people. It's your MP, it's your MLA, it's, it's your justice minister, it's those people who have cared. Of, of the laws of this country. It's those people who sit down and say yay or nay, this will be a law, this will not be a law, this will never will never come to pass. You I mean and I don't want to and I don't want to give you the bad answer that you know we're only the police, we only enforce the law. You are part of that we do have a conscience too and you don't know what the public is what is it that we what the public is that it's very important. However, uh, you know, you talking to me, yes, you have my, you have my attention, now you've got my responses. But am I going to be the person who's going to address all of this? Now, do I, are people are aware of this? Are people aware of what we're inquiry? Are people are aware of the grid? Man, uh, it's beautiful. But you have to understand that it's, it, as much as you put it in context, you have, it, it's not that easy or that simple. It's very difficult. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to just comment about uh, Gandhi and how he was able to generate public opinion and ended up. Uh, through peace and through goodwill and through telling the truth, ended up uh, having the British leave in India. India he yes. did not join the uh, um, British Iran. military at yeah. the bottom and work his way out. Well, what's his, what was his biggest lie? Anyway, you know, so I, 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 I must follow. Well, no, there goes my people. I must follow. Anyway, 
I just had the one last thing. Oh, they two last things. No, 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 no,